Hello folks, today I'm going to give away some dirty little secrets here about Photoshop adjustment out of Camera Raw. I do a calendar every year for Blue Ridge Healthcare and uh, so you need really vibrant photos for a calendar and I went up to Wilson Creek this past weekend, shot some pictures and I'm going to tell you just a little bit about what my approach was before I start into delve into what I did here with some of these photos. Um, you know, when you go out into the wild, uh, you can take a bunch of gear with you and you can set up and you can try to shoot the perfect shot or you and, and you can struggle or you can just uh, carry the minimal amount of gear that you can so you can put your hands down on rocks, you can climb around in lots of cool places and then you can just shoot, shoot, shoot in camera raw on auto. And so I have tried to be of both schools in the past. I am now in my old age, the latter school. I go out and I put my camera into camera raw mode. I don't even bother with JPEGs anymore. And I, I worry about everything I'm going to do from a color adjustment in post. And I do not sit out and drive myself nuts trying to shoot the perfect picture and wait for the perfect light. I go out and shoot a whole lot more pictures that way. And so I'm going to give you some examples of what I do, my approach and how I merge some photos and how I color a, uh, correct some photos. So I have Photoshop of you know, open in the background here. And that's an image I just, uh, it was an image I shot into the darkness so I edited just a few minutes ago. I'll get out of that one. Let's pick one at random here. Here's one I shot uh, on Wilson Creek. And you can see this looks pretty blase, doesn't it? Now, if I'd shot in camera raw and JPEG, the camera, which was a, Di a Nikon D5100 I was using, would give me a fairly nice uh, JPEG version of this that has some decent color saturation. This one in camera raw looks really terrible right now, and that's because all the really cool stuff is being hidden right now. Camera raw shoots way, way, way more data than JPEG does. So you go to, to edit a JPEG, you're not going to be able to do any of this cool stuff you see me do here in camera raw. Almost any good, good DSLR is going to have a camera raw mode, and I recommend you right away start shooting in camera raw because you're going to see, particularly if you've got Photoshop CC or Photoshop any almost any version of the last four or five Photoshops before, you're going to have the camera raw, Adobe camera raw. I'm going to double click on this image. I was in bridge just then. Now I'm in, I'm looking at a camera raw version. I've opened up camera raw 8.2 and it says Nikon D5100 up here. And uh, well, before anybody else kind of jumps on me for not using a screen capture, I like to be able to point to the screen. It's just a more organic way to teach and talk for me. So I do have Camtasia Studio. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't meet up to your standard if you don't like me having a, uh, actually shooting the screen, but this is my way of teaching. First thing I'm going to look at with this image, I'm going to say, well, the exposure, yeah, it's, it's probably decent. It's pretty dark over in here. I'm going to actually, though, since this is a little bright up in here now, I'm going to bring the exposure back just a little bit. Everything's going to look really dark and initially. You're going to say, well, that looks like crap. But I'm going to boost my saturation up down here. See saturation? Let's boost that up a little bit. We want that sky to be blue. And it was a blue sky day. It wasn't a perfectly blue sky day. Now, you're not going to get a whole lot of what you deep blues and everything unless you play around with your vibrance here. So I'm going to pull my vibrance up a little bit. Now we start to see it get really kind of nice. Clarity is going to bring in some more color depth, detail. And actually, it's almost like a contrast to me. It seems like it's very contrasty. But it just deals with the colors, not the uh, the blacks and things. Now you see over here, I've lost a lot over in here. But we do have a very excellent shadows tool right here that you can pull into. And you start to see a little bit more of what's in the shadows. Now, the thing is, you know, you start to blow away some areas that you that you maybe want to keep some shadows. So I'm going to do two versions of this photo. I'm going to get this one. I'm going to get I'm going to actually adjust this photo for this region first, then for this region over here. And we're going to do kind of a little trick that I do. This is like I say, me giving away my dirty little secrets. Um, you know, the, the, the temperature looks pretty good. I might go just a little bit more warm with this since it was fall. So I'm going to go just a little bit more over to the right. I drag, I drag the temperature over because I want it to look a little bit more golden. And I'm probably going to look, look at my blacks. Eh, my blacks are pretty good. Might bump my clarity up just a little bit more. Shadows looks good. Highlights. I, I, a lot of times I'll just play around and see what it's going to do. I don't think any, maybe I actually took a little bit out of highlights. And my contrast, uh, probably pretty good about where it was. Now I've got I've got this sort of for me I've got this adjusted for this region right here. I'm gonna say open image. So now in Photoshop, I'm gonna have that part of that image open. Now I've got this very dark part over here. Now I could use Photoshop shadow highlights and stuff to work with this. But I think what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna reopen the image again. 
And there it comes back up just the way I left it. But this time I'm going to try to make this part over here look a little better. So I'm going to expose it a little bit more, you know, not a whole lot. And I'm going to bring my shadows up some. I'm probably going to, uh, you know, bring the blacks up just a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy with this. I still want to have my good dark area. I see a little bit of a blue cast over here. So I'll probably just change my, you know, go up a little bit farther over to the right with my temperature. I'm up to 56.50 now with that. That's looking pretty good, and the rest of this looks kind of a little bit blown out to me, a little unrealistic. And, you know, it depends on just how far I want to go with this. I might have gone too far with this, but it's just an example. It's just a tutorial of what I do. I'm going to hit Open Image again. Now I've got an exact copy of that. I've got this one here, which is dark, and I've got this one here, which is very, very bright, but we've got this side over here. Well, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to do Control-A, and that selects everything. See, I'm going to do Control-C. I'm going to go back over here to this, this one. I'm going to do Control-V. And you know what? Actually, you know, I should have done it the opposite way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my background. I'm going to click on that with my finger here. I'm going to pull down and make a copy. And that, that right there beside the trash is your copy button. So now I've got a background copy. I'm going to pull this top layer that's very bright below this one. I'm going a little bit, little bit wrong here. I went a little bit askew on my tutorial. But I'm going to click back on the background copy. This is the one that's very uh, dark, this one up here. I'm going to go over to the eraser, and I'm going to go ahead and just erase off. That I, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm making my size much larger. Right now. I probably need about a five, yeah, my 507 is not too bad. Uh, yeah, that's going to be about right size, I think. So I've got a brush, and it's, it's soft. My hardness is set to zero. You don't want this hardness to be, you want to be very, absolutely the softest you can get. So I'm going to click back over here just anywhere just to get, just to turn that dialog box off. Now I'm going to start erasing away the top layer. Now I know I'm, I'm, I'm messing with reality here. But I'm really trying to make a very nice uh, calendar photo. And I can see here, yeah, maybe a little dark in the water here. Let's go ahead and race that away. Let's erase all this away probably. I think we'll be all right to this point right here. So now what I've got is a, uh, is a photo that looks pretty nice. It's still got a lot of contrast in it. It's still very dramatic looking. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to set, go up over here. You see this little, these little lines and everything are here? Right beside uh, history. I'm going to click that. And I'm going to flatten this image. And, you know, like I said, I may have gone a little too light over here. You know, and it's quite possible I did. I could say edit, undo. Um, undo flatten image. And I could go to this image that's underneath here. Uh, this image. And I could darken it a little. Let's say image adjust brightness contrast and maybe I bring the brightness down just a hair now that look is that looks a little more realistic to me now I'll flatten this image so there you go so I worked with layers and I did multiple changes out of uh, camera raw and let's look at this thing up close and see what we've got uh, looks pretty we've got a hundred percent we can do a little pixel peep little pixel peep in here and see and you know that could be sharpened I might sharpen this later I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. It actually looks decent to me. I'm going to do a control zero to get back out. And that's a possible uh, calendar photo at Wilson Creek. I'm going to say file, save, and I'll call this. I'm going to, I'm going to save it as a JPEG, or a Photoshop. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. And we'll say, I would like to keep the name of my thing in case I need to go back and refer to it and know which photo I, I made it from. I put a dash E and I, I put that there, which stands for edited. I have edited that photo. I'm going to say, okay. I'm saving as a level 12 JPEG because you, you lose very little um, quality, very, very little if you go to level 12 JPEG. So I'm going to do a control W to close that and a control W to close the other one that I copied from. I'm not going to save that, no. Let's look at one I've done as a panorama. So I'm going to kind of go down here and see if I can find one. And I've already made some of the better ones, so, you know, I guess I'll have to make one that's not so great. Uh, edit it in camera raw, edit it in camera raw. I've already done that one. Let me see if I can find one here and we'll jump ahead. Yes, okay. So I've actually got three photos here that I had intended to do a panorama with. I've not done any adjustment on this. And I'm, I'm, the reason I'm showing you this is a good trick here, too, in your camera raw. So I've got three images, and this is way overexposed over here. I'm actually just end up clipping this out, but I'm going to show you, at least for this tutorial, how to do this. I'm going to double-click on this first one, the first one farthest to the left, and I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, adjustment set right. I'm going to do my saturation again, some vibrance, 
Uh, I might, to, I might leave them, I think I might go the exposure down just a wee bit, but come up with my whites, uh, come up with my highlights just a little, and do the blacks. There we go. Let's do a little bit more vibrance. Let's do some some uh, clarity, clarity there. Now we go. That looks pretty nice. And I'm not. To, it's a little maybe underexposed on the sky, but I'm not going to sweat that too bad. I could do a little bit more vibrance maybe. I don't want to do too much. I don't want things to look artificial. So now I've got this one, but I know I've got two more photos, right? If you go up here, this little thing here with the sliders on it, that's your presets. And you can go here, and I've already, you'll see I've already got some Wilson Creek presets that I've put in here. But I'm going to save this one because it's going to be unique just to this collection of photos. So I'm going to click this little uh, little dialog type area right here, and I'm going to say Save Settings. I'll say it. All this comes up, all the things I want to save. Yeah, sure. And I'm going to call this Wilson Creek 5. Just because I, that looks like that's probably the next one. Save. So now I've got Wilson Creek 5 setting saved. Now I'm not going to open this image. There's no reason to just see. I'm going to say done. And it's going to, when I when I look in my bridge here, that photo has, you can see here, it's it's been changed. But these other two have not. Let's see how dull they are. So I'm going to do a photo merge with these. I'm going to click on this one next. Now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to the presets. I'm going to do Wilson Creek 5. Boom. You don't have to keep working with that, right? I'm going to say, now, you know, I look at this, that at least gets me ballpark. I think maybe I am a little too washed out in the sky. But you know what, I'm going to leave that be at this time. I'm going to say done. So now I've got two photos that largely match as far as uh, color and saturation and brightness, contrast, all those different things, exposure. So I'm going to do the third one. And I'm going to go here again, and I'm going to do the presets in Wilson Creek 5. And there you go. Now that one's really somewhat overexposed. You can see all this up in here. This looks very white over here. I might actually go in and play with this one just a little. Let's take the exposure down just a wee bit. Let's saturate just a little bit more and a little bit more vibrance. Maybe a little bit more shadows there just to bring that out, see? So now I've actually got two photos that match up and one that's just a little bit different because I knew it was going to white balance a little bit differently over here. Now I'm going to say done. Now I've got three images that are still in camera raw. I mean, I could do anything I want to with them. You can undo all, all this, by the way, is totally... Uh, non-destructive. I could go back to the uh, the way that it was shot just in a heartbeat. So you're not changing anything like you would be if you change if you change the JPEG and save it this way. Hey, end of story. You've you've done a lot of damage really to the the data that's there. It's hard to go back and undo that. That's why a lot of times if you people are working with JPEGs, they'll have version one, version two, version three, version four, and you know different different adjustments of it. But if you work in camera raw, I can go back and I can click on one button. I can totally undo any of this stuff I've done in camera raw. Enough of that. Let's click on all three of these images. One, two, and three. And all I did I held my shift key down to select all three. I'm gonna go up under tools up here. I'm gonna go to Photoshop and I'm gonna do photo merge. The photo merge is just great if you've not been using it in Photoshop. You should. It allows you to do things that are impossible for a camera lens to do. I'm going to click on Vignette Removal and Geometric Distortion create Correction here. So I've got all three of these, and I've done that, and I've got all, I mean, auto, and auto should work fine for this sort of image. Now, this is going to take a while. I'm going to just talk just a little bit. This will probably take a couple minutes for Photoshop to do what it's getting ready to do. It's going to look at, at all three of those images. It's going to try to stitch those three images together in a in a uh, logical way. Now I didn't take any tripod down with me, anything like that. It was too heavy to climb into this little gorge and these little uh, rough areas with a tripod. All this is handheld. I could have done this better if I'd set up and leveled up and all that, but you know what? Like I say, I'm just all, an all-on-the-fly kind of guy. So what's going to happen when this comes up, there's going to be some white around the edges. There's going to be some weird little curves. I generally just crop all that mess out. And uh, it just doesn't make a you know, big deal one way or the other in the end. So here we go. Photoshop's working its little magic. Pardon me, I just burped a little bit there. That was my roast beef from last night that Nikki made. And you can see it's looking a little bit weird over here, but now, look, it just finished it. Great. So I've got a cool panorama, panorama now. Panorama. I'm going to click on the uh, crop button up here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this down and just get some of this out that I don't need. Now, this is not going to fit in my calendar. This is just me showing a... Uh, just, just a way to do this, uh, and I, I will show you some that I've done for the calendar. I'm going to crop some of this out here that was, uh, you know, where my lens had a problem with the sunlight. I'm going to pull that in because it's just not very interesting there on that, on that edge. Let's see, there we go. That's about what we're looking at. That's about what we're going to get. This will be a nice little panorama, and I'll put that out on on, uh, on my Smug Mug account. I'll do that. 
Let's do a control zero and look at it. Now, right now we can see it's still in sections. So, you know, I can see it's funny what, what Photoshop decides to take and what it doesn't. But it, but it always matches up really beautifully. They've done a great job creating this photo merge function. So I'm going to flatten that image. And then as I look at this image, you know, I might do a shadow highlight on this, or I might do it. Let's just do an image adjust. Let's do an auto tone to see what happens. And that too red. I'm going to do a control Z. Let's do an auto contrast to see what happens. Nothing happens. That means that I have my contrast set really well. So I'm going to go up image adjust shadow highlights. Now listen, I am a hater of the shadow. You know what? I'm not even going to. I'll show you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy this layer. I'm not a big fan of shadow highlights, but it is useful in some ways. And I'll show you how. This is just too dark right in here in my estimation. So I'm gonna, I've got a copy of the layer. I'm going to turn the top layer off, the eyeball. See that? I turn it off. Now I'm really just looking at this layer here. I'm going to select that layer. I'm going to say Image, Adjust, Shadow Highlights. And all I'm going to do is try to brighten up that rock there. See how it does everything like that? Now you can go in here and selectively choose how much shadow highlight you want. And I, I always recommend you bring this down, this amount down significantly. I think usually less than 10%. Now your tonal width is more useful. You can you can go do some things that don't look artificial, but the camera raw, or excuse me, not camera raw, the shadow highlights can really give you some artificial looking stuff. Now I'm going to hit the little preview button here, and here's what I had before. It's a little too dark in that rock. Now a little bit more in that rock of what I want to see. I want to see, I didn't want it to look like you just couldn't see what was in that rock. So now I'm fairly happy. 12% is more than I'd usually use, but I think I'm fairly happy with the way that rock looks. I'll say okay. Now we're going to turn the top layer back on, which is what I want. I'm going to get my eraser again, and I'm going to click on the top layer, and I'm going to erase that shadow off of that rock. And now it's not quite such a big black blob in the middle of my photo. And I didn't notice what it did over here. Just a quick look and see, do I need to do any of this shadow in the trees? I don't know if I like that or not. I say, um, edit and do that. Now what I could do, I could go to my eraser here. And I could say, uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong place. I'm going to go to opacity. Let's say I go 50%. And now I'm going to erase off about 50% of that shadow. So let's just try that and see what that looks like. That's a little more subtle there. I can deal with that. Not too bad. Let's do that water a little bit too. There we go. So now, pretty decent, pretty decent panorama. I'm going to flatten the image again. Flatten the image. And I'm going to say File, Save As. And we'll call this Wilson Creek Panorama. It puts panorama there for you. Ellis Wilson, C R E K. Panorama, I'm going to call it six, I think. I think I've done a bunch of other ones, maybe up to five. So here's number six, and we'll save it as the level 12 JPEG. OK. And that is a big image. See, image size, that is 5746 wide, 2600 tall, at 300 pixels per inch. So that's bigger than you're going to be able to get realistically with any lens. Uh, you know, that's that's three shots. So well, you maybe get some sort of wide angle lens that'll do that. You know, I, I, I just typically go out and use the uh, stock image that comes with my uh, camera, with my D5100. I use a D3200 some. I haven't migrated up to the really expensive cameras uh, yet, you know, because I can do most of whatever I want to without having to do that. These are some of the photos that I've done. Now, all these, if I showed, if I showed them to you, it looked right pretty there, you know, as I flip through these. I like that one in particular. Every one of these were just shot camera raw on the fly. This one was shot into a very dark area. I did the same sort of thing. And I'm only spending probably, you know, five minutes. Since I've kind of got my, my process down, I'm spending about five minutes typically doing these edits. That was actually a panorama I made from that previous shot that we were talking, we were looking at just a minute ago. Here's another one. You see where I didn't do that with the rock on that one. This was a very difficult shot that was very dark down in here. I liked this uh, kind of play of lights, though, and I didn't do a feathering on the waterfall. Uh, a lot of people will do like about a one-second exposure, and I like to do that as well <clears throat> to get the feather there, but I did not want to lug a tripod down there with me, and it wasn't a good rock to stand on or put, prop my camera on to keep it totally still, so that's why that's not feathered. But so there you go, folks. That's my little, my say, my little uh, dirty secret for how I make photos that typically will, will get put into calendars and I've been in a lot of you know had a lot of very colorful looking photos and I just go down there and I shoot like a ninja man I shoot hundreds and hundreds of photos I do not stand around and wait for the perfect sunlight uh, I know there's much to be said for that and I admire the people that do I used to try to do that myself now I just point shoot go camera raw is the secret 
Photoshop is the master uh, ultimate weapon for fixing it. And uh, then just using your imagination, using layers, uh, trying to, you know, I guess erase off uh, portions that you don't like. I'll get this. I'm not going to make this a little bit lighter. I actually did, I think, make this pretty much lighter. Once again, I wanted a very dramatic shot that goes from light to dark. Folks, I hope this has helped. Send me your uh, techniques if you've got any. Ah, look at this. I've got some graffiti. I've got to erase off of this one. Uh, it's not going to be a problem to do that. We'll use the healing brush or the clone tool to do that. And uh, I'll answer any questions you have as best I can. And maybe you share your techniques. Make us a video and show us your little dirty little secrets of how you make photos look just great. Cheers, folks. Uh, keep watching. Stay tuned. And uh, keep shooting great video and great photos.